and uh, welcome back, everyone. Nice to have you here again. Uh, hopefully, as yesterday, you had a good session today. And um, we're also going to start this uh, session with um, kind of a summary of uh, the physical uh, session one. So um, if you are around, Bjorn Kristiansen, the king of training presentation. Yeah, I'm I'm around. <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah. yeah um, just to recap, it has been um, been uh, now two basic strength uh, sessions um, with uh, numerous uh, examples of exercises. So I hope that everybody uh, has got some tips and ideas of uh, what they can. Um, can do, uh, which which uh, is profitable for uh, for cross country skiing. I really hope. And then we have uh, have uh, done uh, two sprint sessions, uh, one for standing and one for sitting skiers. <clears throat> so uh, also there that uh, it was possible to follow the recipe that was handed out from. Um, Federic, uh, I hope uh, that was uh, that gave you that this gave you something, and uh, and then we're continuing uh, with the hard work. Uh, what to say? Uh, we're we're just showing you then uh, kind of like the total percentage of what we are doing in training is actually pure easy work so um so uh over over these uh, these uh, three sessions that you have uh, been attending to by yourselves uh, that's that's the hard part and and it just is a small piece of of the total picture but then tomorrow then we're we're going uh, with the intervals uh why interval training uh, yeah it is so that when you um, when you do uh, periods uh, with uh, a little bit higher intensity, uh, wrapped up with uh, with a small uh, small break between, uh, that makes makes you uh, adjust or uh, fool your body in a way that that you can go a little bit harder and faster um, with with this kind of training, and uh, for sure it it. Um, it uh, increases uh, the the um, maximum uh, oxygen uptake, which is is crucial for uh, endurance sport. Couple of other uh, good arguments uh, on the sheet or uh, on the handout that you're getting. So uh, just uh, feel free to to read, and um, the the routine uh, for uh, for tomorrow's is. Um, yeah, it's uh, coming into season start, so uh, so that means we're going a little bit uh, higher with the intensity, and and the session that we are presenting uh, now for tomorrow's is uh, is quite hard one, uh, but then the intensity is rising during uh, during the whole session. So we'll we'll um, just do a warm up routine as. Uh, as we did with the with the sprint training, half hour, uh, and here with the uh, with the last five minutes of of uh, the warm up, that you go uh, slightly uh, slightly higher with the, with the intensity, uh, like a medium medium hard intensity, and then uh, the main part will be three times six minutes. Uh, uh, it's it said here I three I four I five uh, that that's just the Norwegian saying of uh, of the intensity levels. But uh, you see the the heart rate, uh, which is uh, with the with the six minute uh, long intervals is eighty two to eighty seven percent of of your max uh, heart rate. And uh, then we have three times four minutes uh, going slightly harder. Uh, 87 to 92 uh, percent of the maximum heart rate, and uh, coming 
kind of an all out with the last three intervals, uh, three times 20 seconds, 92 to 97% of uh, maximum heart rate. Uh, between all intervals, um, it is um, a two minute break. Uh, for those of you who can't measure um, with uh, a pulse monitor, then uh, we, we like to say that the, the six minute ones are, uh, are so hard that you still have the feel that you have one gear plus the sprint left, uh, like a leftover. When, when you're going. So it's it's quite uh, convenient, actually. It's um, that's the medium hard. And then uh, then you add on the next gear uh, with the four minute ones. Um, it's, uh, it's it's unconvenient to talk. Uh, it's 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 OK to answer, but uh, having a conversation, it's uh, annoying. And uh, then with the uh, 20 seconds, second ones, then then you're just going all out as as in the sprint actually. After uh, finishing the um, the routine uh, or um, the intervals, then uh, then the routine continues with a cool down of uh, 15 minutes, and um, this is meant to be on on skis, roller skis. Uh, but if you don't have possibilities of doing that, of course, whatever you have like the wheelchair, uh, bicycle, running, for example. Uh, but then when we are on, on skis or uh, roller skis, we also add to an um, outrun uh, of 10 minutes just uh, or a hike uh, just uh, to, uh, to let the muscles work a little bit uh, different uh, that, than the main, main part to, uh, to wash uh, quite uh, quite good and the reflection uh, during the, the, the or after the training is is um, was it possible to uh, keep uh, a good technique with the with the way you were moving with the tools you were using and um, uh, were you also able to rise the intensity during the um, during the intervals when it changed to from from six to four and from four to twenty, four minutes to twenty seconds. Okay, so uh, good luck for tomorrow. Thank you, Bjorn. Fantastic to hear, and uh, also to you, um, Atlas. If you have um, any experience from today's session, please write it in the chat and. Um, Tell us what you think about the, the session, or if you learn anything, you can write down that. So, it, um, it's uh, feel free to uh, to write in uh, in the chat. Uh, and we also have Erke here today, I think. So uh, maybe she can uh, also watch out for questions during um, the session we have today, today and the headline for today. Okay, we're gonna start now with uh, the headline importance of teamwork and we are extremely pleased to be able to present a successful team with Sebastian Modin and Robin Brunteson who have worked together for a couple of years. Yeah, Christian, we got a question there I think from uh, Marcel Loparada. Uh, yeah. Would you like to connect to ask yourself uh, Marcelo? I think it's for Bjorn if he's still here regarding the workout. Yeah, I'm I'm here. So shoot. Or yeah, he's asking which uh, heart rate is used for the for the intervals. Oh, uh, you have to uh, take that uh, over again. Say it over again, uh, Pederik. Uh, can you say a little bit more uh, more about the heart rate for the workout on the intervals? Yeah, uh, the heart rate uh, with uh, six minutes. Then uh, you you have if if you know your your maximum heart rate, if if that's uh, measured, then then uh, with the six minute uh, intervals, it's eighty two to eighty seven percent of the maximum. Uh, 
uh, with the four minutes, it's um, 87 to 92 percent of the maximum. And uh, with the 20 seconds, it's an all out. Uh, but if you don't have uh, control with what your uh, mac what the uh, maximum heart rate is, then just go with the f uh, with the feeling that uh, long ones. Then you should at least have one gear plus your sprint uh, kept inside and not not been used with the six minute ones, with the four minute ones. The leftover or what you should uh, held in inside uh, as a weapon for for the three last ones is that uh, you go full but uh, you should have a sprint left and uh, with 20 seconds is an all out okay uh, um hi hi i hope you can you hear me yes yeah. we hear you Okay, yeah, I have uh, three questions. One was this, which uh, maximum heart rate uh, do you use? Because sometimes they use the, 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 the theoretical 220 minus age. And I, I think it's, it's, not, it's not useful as uh, you should have, you should measure your maximum heart rate. So you have the real, the real uh, um, figure. The other, uh, the other thing that you already answered is, can you replace uh, heart rate measurement if you don't have a heart rate monitor with uh, RPE, with, um, uh, with perceived, perceived ex ex exertion as uh, it's, it's difficult to, at that, at that, uh, at that uh, intensities to, to, to diff get a different uh, feeling from hard to very, very hard or very hard. I mean, when you use the Borg scale. And the last question is, what what do you think about polarized training for for this sport? That's all I have to ask. Um, I hope it's it's OK. Yeah. Uh, yeah, then uh, I explained uh, with the feeling, but I, I think if, if you're in, uh, what to say, uh, you don't have to be inexperienced even, but uh, you can uh, even make this easier than, um, than, than we are doing by you have three levels. You have uh, easy, you have medium and you have hard. Uh, so, so that's also uh, a, a good, good way of uh, good way of solving um, whether you're training uh, easy or uh, training hard, because there also it's a possible to uh, possibility of uh, of um, changing between uh, really hard intervals and uh, and uh, and the medium ones. And I uh, would say that uh, medium ones, they are those who are from five minutes, uh, lasting from five minutes or, uh, or longer. And, uh, and the hard ones is, is up and obviously then to, uh, to uh, five minutes. Uh, for sure, I agree. Uh, it's uh, no use of, of uh, using the 220 minus H that's, uh, pure waste uh, because then then you're probably or if you're lucky you're hitting the right zone but uh, probably you're you're not um, so uh, just a small tip is is um, to uh, to make uh, by yourself um, a max pulse test that you whether you, if you're a good runner you can do it uh, do it flat but if, if if you're not that good then find yourself a hill that Lasts uh, about three minutes and start with with a uh, medium speed uh, in the first interval. You do three of them. Uh, second one goes slightly harder, and uh, with the last, just give uh, everything you have for uh, for three minutes. And and uh, there the break is sh should be twice as long as as uh, what you're. Uh, what your 
doing? We no we normally um, uh, the periodization of uh, interval training with uh, from from the Norwegian model is that we we uh, probably uh, the most of us are are doing intervals in in the way that we um, we do the long and medium ones during um, the basic preparation period. Uh, and then when it comes to the beginning of the fall, we go slightly harder and then uh, and shorter uh, with intervals and uh, and um, coming towards or in the season. Then depending on how many races we are attending to, we uh, we're just going really hard. So actually, it's it's quite stable uh, the way we're. Uh, we're doing our uh, intervals. Tradition says, or culture says, that it's uh, two to three times a week. So it's not that we we um, we uh, have periods or blocks with uh, with uh, really hard weeks, and then uh, other other blocks with uh, with less it's not that common uh, has been tested but uh, uh, in short term it uh, seems to uh, to work very well but in the long term uh, if you're trying to last uh, a couple of years as an uh, athlete then uh, yeah it's it's so that we um, we 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 are um, staying faithful to to this model that we are doing two up to three times a week during the the whole year actually it's just the intensity that changes throughout uh, the season i think we're going to stop there uh, bjorn to continue the program and if you have any questions you can write it in the chat and maybe bjorn also can answer in the chat if you have time uh, bjorn um if it's okay for you, I'll try. Good. Then we're going to continue with the importance of teamwork. We, as I said, we're going to have um, Sebastian Modin and Robin Bruntesson in uh, the beginning, and then Aileen Carey, the head coach from Team USA. But we start this uh, session now with Sebastian Modin and Robin Bruntesson. I don't know if you if you hear me, Sebastian and Robin, and can uh, I can see you both? Fantastic. <laughs> Hello, hello. How are, how are you guys? Hi. We're fine. What about you? Very fine. I'm looking forward uh, to hear from you. As far as I know, I, uh, you will have a presentation for us with the headline, The Importance of Cooperation Between Athletes and Guide to Perform. So take it away. Okay. Yeah. So we just start quickly. So we... I think we assume that most of you are quite quite familiar with the classification system and things like that. So we're going to talk like from a B1 perspective, of course, since I'm a B1, but I th we think also this will is quite ap uh, applicable for for all the B1, B2, B3 athletes. So I am I've been on this circuit for like ten years, and actually I was I was as been I've been visually impaired all my life, but was like B two B three until I was like ten years old. So I started to lose more sight. So I started skiing at that time. So uh, and yeah, I've been been racing in the para circuit for like ten years. And what about Robin? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been uh, thirty five years uh, living in Östersund in Sweden, and um, I have also been racing. Uh, cross-country skiing for many years uh, as a former athlete in the Swedish national team and now as a guide or pilot or something like this I try to be <laughs> yeah yeah so and we can switch slide again and Sebastian can take the words because this is an uh, interesting one mm, yeah so we <clears throat> we thought about this and what is the things we can we can bring up in such a short time so uh, like 10 minutes as we were are assumed to speak so firstly we think the trust is very important i think everyone can can like assume 
that trust is important in particular for me that I have to follow the guide blindfolded and do what he says to me. But uh, we want we think that it's also very important for the guide to trust trust athletes is I mean, he has to know that I do what he says and that our commu communication somehow like uh, fit together. So it's it's like a both trust in both directions. Uh, so maybe not not just the athlete who has nope, to trust the guy, sure. even though that's very important. So but to reach this, uh, it's a long process and it's much work to do. Uh, so it's, it's not a quick fix to <clears throat> to uh, create such a relationship, we think. Uh, so it, it's it's lots of hours together, and this could always also be something. I mean, that you, uh, as well as you 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 um, analyze technique or what you do in your training and other things around your 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 skiing or uh, your sport. This could be is is like one thing you have to do the same, like analyze what could what could athletes do, what could so in this case what could I have. I do better or in another way to, to make this better or what could the guide uh, have done so you have to you have to analyze this and try to develop it all the time so it, it takes time and to, to reach that we think it's important with communication uh, like between us and maybe uh, another part who can who can see us and see what we're doing and like see what how both of us uh, 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 act uh, at the same time so it's also important with the flexibility because this is a relationship and we have other things to do uh, on the side and things coming up so it's very much of of flexibility from both sides so sometimes it has to for example for me Robin it's, he has to do another things so we have to train very early or uh, or later in the morning or whatever so you have to be very flexible from both both sides to make this uh, make this work so it's very also challenging to find the guys because <clears throat> as the as the para sports seem to develop it's it's not very easy to find the guides who, who can keep up and uh also the those who can keep up but who want to make the effort as i said to to make the effort to be a guide uh, or to reach this this kind of trust or to to uh do this go through so it's not very easy. also since skiing it's not a worry we're a big sport as we know so it's 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 hard and so as i said you have to be on the be a racer yourself and maybe stop the career and want to do this instead but often if it's like those who who stop racing themselves they want to do something else but so we have a challenge which i think all of we can we can uh, i think it's i'm i'm not the only one who has uh, but it could also be a financial thing of course because you have to find final financial resources to to employ the guides so. and uh, also we think it's <clears throat> very important something we're struggling with you can just have one guide because you have to ensure yourself if anything happens such as you know the guide may may just break a leg or whatever and then you're 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 alone in your training so uh i think most of the athletes we have one guide we race with and train the most of training with but we have to find other guides and other way of training to ensure that i mean we are flexible if something happens and we also want to train enough and uh, we have to train maybe more than you can do with just one guide so uh to keep up with with the guys out there so that's also a, uh, that's a, that's also a challenge and it's also an effort to to how to say learn a, learn a new guide to guide uh so that's also something we have recognized it's easier to when you have one guide that that guide can maybe uh, be helpful in in the process of learning new guides uh, so because it's it's kind of it's kind of an, of an effort and it's not favorable to ski to sell them together because you want to stay updated uh, both as an athlete because then you know how the guide behaves and the, that guide because then he remembers how to how to behave or to communi communicate 
So that's actually something. And then from Robin's perspective, uh, what do we think from Robin's perspective? Yeah, from my uh, perspective, it's uh, first of all very funny to uh, be a guide uh, when you have uh, learned the tricks. Uh, but in the start, it's a little bit tough. But uh, if I should uh, make some statements, what I think is good for it, then it would be one of the most is that we can still train a lot on a high level and that we can uh, find uh, a new challenging way to compete. And uh, it's fun with challenges in life and then uh, having those challenges as a job then it's kind of a dream job <laughs> who uh, for a guy like me who loves to train a lot and compete a lot um, so it's a really fun work to do when it's working uh, but I, I can also be uh, very proud of us together when we do something very challenging, because many things with Vision Limpair is very, uh, it's much tougher. <laughs> uh, so uh, I think when we manage to make those challenges, then the, then it's uh, like uh, we say in Sweden, de la double glad, yeah, like uh, shared joy is like double joy. And that the cooperation when it finally succeeds, that's fa fantastic, I would say. It's like um, driving two machines, going into one and then cross the tracks like one. That's uh, what I like uh, really much uh, about guiding. And uh, I also have one more slide. Uh, and uh, I must tell you, when uh, the first time I met Sebastian, it was uh, one time in uh, one summer ski school in, I think it was 2008. And I was working as an instructor because I like to try to learn kids how to ski. And uh, when I heard it was one guy who was visually impaired at the camp and he was racing and he was doing all the training and practice like all of the other kids. And I could not understand how he behaved to get around the tracks like the others. And since that day, I have a um, huge respect for the VI skiers and racers and uh, whatever. So that made a big impression for me in that day. Um, then I also think it's a little bit extra fun to help others. Uh, I have diabetes myself and I, like I said, I used to be doing camps for also young kids with diabetes when I try to yeah. learn they to yeah. play and doing sports and movement and stuff like this. And when I got the question 2017 to help uh, or test to be a guide with, with Sebastian, uh, I said, uh, I think I said yes pretty immediately uh, and uh, it was it gives me a lot uh, like a person and uh, I can also uh, do uh, what I love the most in the world and that's making sports and uh, doing this and practice hard with a guy who I know who is uh, uh, we think a lot the same, I think. So uh, uh, then it's very funny, and uh, I sport should be funny, and uh, that's what's make uh, life good. That's uh, and uh, funny. Then I can do my dream job. Or what do you <laughs> <laughs> What do you say, Sebastian? Yes, I I agree with you. It's very important to have fun together. Also, since it's I mean it's <clears throat> it's kind of a special relationship but because you want to you want to perform together but still you will spend a lot of time together so you have to like be uh somehow on off in the in the relationship so super focused out there and before start and and so on but also you have to you have to smile uh, in between those moments so lastly i think we could say <clears throat> 
it, it may it may seem tough uh, to you say, but uh, it, it may so uh, sound tough. But I mean, uh, uh, the guide is kind of a key for the WI athletes to to perform on their maximum level because it doesn't matter how fit you are or uh, how much you train if you don't have uh, a guide, a relationship with a guide that makes you like be able to push everything uh, around the track. So I think that's maybe that maybe sums up what do we think about this uh, this teamwork. Yeah, and uh, if the our team work and this whole teams works. Uh, I don't know because uh, I've sent uh, one movie to uh, Per uh, Erik. Uh, maybe it, the teams work or maybe it's not. Teams we will work, see. yeah, if teams, teams work. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second, so we'll see. So that was kind of just kind of like how important we want to, this film, just like how important it is to, so I as an athlete know what Robin means when we are to take a sharp turn as well as he has to know that I'm following him and like take the instructions he gives me. So let's see if team's working. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid I'll just get the sound here, not the, okay. uh, the video, but I suggest that we can post this video. We have a Facebook group for this camp, so maybe we can post it there <laughs> later on to, to yeah. make sure that uh, that it works. That's a, can see it. Yeah. that's a nice way to fix a problem in the team. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 a problem it, in teams. Yes, yeah, yeah. but so so that was kind of the idea with this clip, just to try to think from both sides, not only the athlete side, because it's uh, yeah, that's. That's the ID with the film or the short clip. So yeah, that was, that was actually actually what we had. Thank you so much. It was uh, really interesting to to hear from you. Uh, if somebody has some questions, oh. it's uh, feel free to ask them now. Uh, hopefully, it's okay with Sebastian and Robin that we have some questions. If it's some, sure. I actually have one question or two or three maybe. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, uh, one for Robin. Uh, what do you find the most challenging to be uh, a guide? Yeah. Into all, the situation. All, yeah, all of you should know that Sebastian is a tough ass. <laughs> <laughs> He's a really tough guy and strong, and uh, you must be at your top uh, uh, conditions to in to go in front of him and uh, you have to always be focused to say the right words or not the left words uh, but um, maybe the most challenging is uh, I think uh, when we are uh, going uh, like uh, on the roads on the roller skiing and uh, we uh, you cannot all the time read the the cars, the big cars and stuff like that. And we one time this summer we met a last wheel. <laughs> What's that? A big truck. Yeah, a big. Uh, and then uh, yeah, I get uh, really scared in in many ways uh, because uh, sometimes I you try to do and stay focused all the time, but sometimes you cannot uh, uh, do anything about what's happening in the traffic. And then it's uh, kind of uh, that's uh, maybe the like the toughest. And I also doing uh, try to do a lot of tricks on the skis all of my career, and um, I don't fell down so often. But this summer, with Sebastian Modin two meters behind, I fell down, and that was like a crazy crash, and you feel shame, and it's like. Yeah, it's a tough. Uh, so moments like this, everything went fine, and Sebastian is like a stone rock, like so. It's no problem for him, 
uh, it was uh, one, only one pole who got broken. And um, if there was a car, maybe the car has been broken if he had hit us. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but uh, moments like this, I think it's uh, challenging as a guide. I see. Thank you. And then one for Sebastian as well here. Uh, you talk about um, the communication language with your guide. Uh, how do you, did you develop the communication language used during competitions? Uh, oh, that's a tricky question because, I mean, I think you've learned more and more <clears throat> during uh, during the year, and and as guides and uh, I myself uh, develop as a skier. I think you you uh, like that you you put higher demand on yourself, and so you you develop and you see what the other guys do, and you try to like you know catch you you try to find ways how to catch up with them or how to hang on or just pass them so i think it's i can't say how it was like five years ago but as it's now i think we it's easier also now because i think i now you know more how it maybe should be or what the easiest way is to to how to understand a guide or how he could could uh could um express himself but you also you always learn new things when it comes new guide in because he has his like unique or own uh, ways to say things or to behave so you always learn something something new and something like which develops your uh, develops yourself because you can always like pick from from him and from others so i think it's it's a tricky it's a tricky way but it's a tricky tricky one but I think it develops all the time and you have to be very i mean uh you have to always have this discussion between the guide and the athletes like uh and it has to be very like like that the floor has to be very open because it it can't be like you criticize like he criticizes me or i do the opposite like just because we with we have like uh, we think something or we 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 find something new which maybe could be a better way so i think you have to be very uh, uh very open minded somehow thank you i don't think we have any questions in the chat uh, shoot in uh, we have one from gary steiger will you speak on the mic gary uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, gentlemen, as it is here in Australia. Um, does the athlete and team guide have to be the same sex, or can a female guide um, a uh, male athlete and vice versa? And um, I'm guessing in competition there would be a limitation on that, maybe one way than the other. So the question is, if it has, if you, if you can, if it could be a, a girl guiding a, a guy. Yeah, yeah, and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's yeah, that's yeah, that's that's legal, and that's I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. Thank you. Thank you, Gary, and thanks for your answer. And I think we are um, through with this uh, part of it. So I just want to say a big thank you to Robin and Sebastian. Fantastic to hear, and uh, good luck for the upcoming season. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, let me continue with Aileen Carey, the head coach for the Team USA and um, the director of US Paralympics Nordic Skiing. Uh, we are really happy to have you, you here, Aileen. If you may, can see you as well. All we right. Presentation. Good. Can you see my presentation? Yeah. All right. Um, Good. Hello. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Eileen Carey um, with Team USA, and um, that was very cool to see uh, Robin and Sebastian to see their teamwork in in uh, in play during that presentation, even. Um, and I think you'll find there's a lot of uh, similarities in what I'm going to talk about um, when thinking about how to develop a positive 
team atmosphere um, among a larger group of the of the whole team together. Um, so just a little bit about um, about the USA team. Obviously, we come from a really big country, and we are not in the same place. We have athletes all over the country, um, and even our 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 top athletes on the national team. Um, they train elsewhere during the um, spring, summer, and fall, and we come together as a small group in the wintertime. And so when we're thinking about developing good team dynamics, um, some of the things that, that we think about are how do we have a, a strong connection even when we don't see each other very often. Um, we usually travel to major competitions with a very small team, um, and this uh, can be kind of like a family, which everybody knows can be um, a really positive thing, but can also bring some some challenges. Um, and so, how do we bring good good atmosphere into a small team environment? Um, and then, how do we make sure our newer athletes also are able to be part of the team? That's a really important piece for us. And um, you know, no matter how long people have been a part of the team and new athletes, um, they are an equally important part of the team as those who maybe win a lot of medals and have been around for a long time. And so we want to make sure to, um, to make sure that we have a, a way that we can all um, connect. Um, and, you know, I think I'll say also that there's lots of different ways to do this. Every team is unique. Um, and there are, you know, many, every nation kind of has their own ways of doing this. And I think there's a lot of ways we can learn from each other. Um, and so I'm going to just talk a little bit more about how how we do it, what are the types of things that that we think about um, and um, and some some specific ideas. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is 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 just building a really strong base. When we talk about um, we talk about training, the physiology of training, we we know we talk about having a really strong base as being the most important part of um, becoming a good athlete. And I think that when you're developing a positive team atmosphere, this is the same thing. And the base, um, the base is building, is building trust. And the way that, um, you know, we think about this is everybody is involved in this athletes, coaches, um, wax techs, our medical staff, and um, the honesty is is a really important component of this. I think we all need to be able to expect honesty from one another, um, coach to coach, athlete to coach, athlete to athlete, and then within the whole team environment um, as a whole, it's really important to be able to to have good honesty in order to build trust over time. Um, and then communication is a really key area as well. And this needs to be um, clear and always a, you know, a two-way or a multi-way conversation. And so an example I can give of this is, is um, if a coach has an athlete do a technique drill, um, it's important to follow up by asking if the drill worked, um, if they felt like it led to an improvement, and if they did or did not, why do they think that is? And I think this is this does a few things. It helps the coach recognize that every athlete has a different learning style, um, and and maybe different things work. And you might have the most perfect drill for one athlete that doesn't work at all for somebody else. Um, and then the other part of this is it's important for for the athlete to really think about what works for them, um, and to take their own training um, development into their their own hands and be able to to communicate honestly with with coaches about what works for them because ultimately that's a that has to be a, a really important component of of this coach athlete relationship and then also the relationship with um, among all team team members um, and then you know the the last part I, I think of as our base is we have a saying on our team um, know your job and do your job and what this speaks to is that everybody has a role to do um, and in order for any individual or for our team to be successful, everybody has to do their job. Um, and this takes on a lot of different meanings. Um, it can mean everything from um, making sure that when an athlete is by themselves, they they get in their quality training as they um, have, you know, 
is part of their their training plan and it can mean um, everybody showing up on time for the team bus to make sure that everybody can get in what they need to before a race, um, making sure a coach is organized and they don't forget to bring the scope to training so we can have a good biathlon session. Um, and, you know, so this is, this is a really important piece to, to, to developing trust among the team. Um, so we begin the year, like I think all of you with, um, with goal setting and, this is a really important piece um, to improving in performance. And I think the key to this um, for us has been to incorporate everybody into that process. So it's not just the athlete setting goals. It's also incorporates the coaches and guides and other support staff um, into the process. And so we start with, you know, breaking down all the different areas that are important for perform for performance and in saying, okay, what are the qualities that, you know, the, the athletes who are best in the world, what are the qualities that they have in this area? And um, how do you need to improve as an athlete in order to get to that point? And then we map out the plan to do that. And of course, much of the plan has to do with what the athlete needs to do, but it also is, you know, what, how does the staff help? What are your ideas for, um, what coaches need to do, what your guide, um, you know, how your guide is a part of this. And, um, and that becomes part of the whole goal setting process. And I like to think about this as the beginning of a conversation. This is not, we don't do this in the spring and then forget about it. This is something that we, um, kind of think about as an ongoing conversation. We go back to it. We say, okay, this, this isn't working. Let's change this a little bit. Um, or maybe the athlete says, you know, I really need more support in this area from, um, from a coach in order to achieve these goals. And that's the way we, um, go throughout the year and try to make sure that we're, um, really working effectively as a team together. And then to end the year, we do really in depth the surveys with athletes. Um, and we ask questions about everything. <laughs> um, so how the team, how was the team dynamic? What detailed questions about training plans? We ask about every area we went to a camp or went to a race and how did that, those, um, training camps or races help to support their, their goals. Um, and, you know, and then everything is focused on, you know, what, what do we want to retain? What do we want to change? What do we want to introduce in order to improve, um, as a whole unit, as the team? And, um, and this is the most important thing that we do. Um, we follow these up with, with very, um, detailed conversations with every athlete and, um, and this is how we plan for the next year. And so this is that kind of um, hopefully gives an overview of how we start the year, how we go through the year and how we finish the year in order to to build this good team environment. Um, and, you know, so now I'll talk a little bit about um, just some some different things that that we do that have helped to build a strong team. Um, so in having a small program that travels often we um it can sometimes be difficult to have um good training partners and so we always look to build community within our within our sport and do do training camps or races together so we um work with Canada when we're in um North America and um this is a photo from the Torsby ski tunnel where we went last um last year with the British team um and have also actually had Sebastian um, join us in the past at this camp. Um, and so this is a really important piece for such a small sport that we all were a team within our nation, but we're also a, a larger community. And, um, and this is a really important piece, I think. Um, this is a photo of all the sit skis lined up ready for our national championships um, that we did last year. And um, I show this because usually we, we go to a world cup and maybe we have, you know, three or four or five athletes, but we have a much bigger 
team. And it's important for us to find times to get together throughout the year. And our national championship is a really important um, event for, for building our community in general within the United States. Um, so this, uh, this is March in a, in a Norwegian fjord going swimming and when we had a World Cup in Cernodal. And, um, and something that we are, are very intentional about is, is trying to find time outside of, of training and racing that we can um, enjoy time together. I'm not sure if I would consider this one enjoyable, <laughs> um, but it was a memorable experience. Um, and this has been in, in, important to, you know, we, when, even when we're looking at our team budget, we always account for some money to make sure that we can do things together as a team. So sometimes it's going to a museum or a movie, or um, sometimes it's, it's going swimming in very cold water. Um, developing team traditions has been, is, is both a fun and um, important way to build team atmosphere and um, one of our team traditions is no matter where we are in the world, we always find a, a cafe. Um, and this is, it, it kind of makes, makes into a, a fun, um, when we go to a new place, being on the search for the, the cafe that, um, that we'll go to is kind of a fun thing. And then we also get excited when we go back to, to venues for multiple years, we get excited about going back to our favorite cafe there. Um, I think, you know, this is especially important among athletes. Um, you know, there's, it's, it's important to, to look for ways to be good teammates for one another, even, um, and maybe especially if you're really strong competitors, this is a photo of, um, Kendall, Gretsch and Oksana Masters, and they often, they're very fierce competitors with one another and are often, um, fighting for the top spots at a, at a world cup. Um, and this is, you know, Kendall doing Oksana's, often does Oksana's hair before, before a race. And this is a really small thing, um, but it's a really important thing to, you know, it's not always about what you yourself need to do before a race. Sometimes it's about building a, a strong atmosphere among teammates. And, um, and this is a really important, um, important thing to be doing, to be looking to do all the time as, as, um, as, as athletes, as coaches, as, as members of a larger team. Um, this, uh, <laughs> this is a photo of me in a sit ski. I'm not a sit skier typically. Um, and uh, this must've been before a relay race because I have a smile on my face still. Um, but uh, making sure that we're, we're all doing things together. This is from a, a training camp in uh, Bend, Oregon in the springtime. And um, we had a relay race where all the coaches uh, had to sit ski. And I can tell you, we're not nearly as fast as any of our athletes are. Um, so it was a suffer fest, but it was a fun, <laughs> it was a fun team and team thing. Um, this uh, is from a training camp in uh, last fall of, um, we have try and find ways, opportunities for our experienced athletes to um, teach the next generation of athletes. Um, and so this is Kendall um, teaching some technique drills to some newer skiers. Um, and this is, this is also a really important, it's not just coaches, but it's athletes also who are really important to building the next generation of, of skiers. And finally, um, you know, we, we, we spent a lot of time talking about training and of course there are many important details in that, but um, in the end we're doing this because we love to ski. And um, most importantly, sometimes you should just go ski with, with your teammates and have fun and not worry so much about what your heart rate is or how long you've, you've been out there. So that's all I have. I'm happy to, to take questions um, if anybody has any and um, thank you all for your attention. Thank you so much, Celine. It was uh, fantastic. Um, I think you summed it up most of my questions. So I think you had a good presentation. <laughs>
But if uh, anyone over here uh, have any uh, questions to Aileen, it's uh, feel free to ask in the chat. It seems like you have been into everything here, Aileen. It was uh, good. It was probably too 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 good, <laughs> Aileen. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe oh, there's a question coming in. How is the camp? Ah, it's from Marshid Eldin. So if you could come on off mute and ask your question. I, th okay, maybe I think so. maybe I can in yep. the chat, I'll try and answer. So I think um, how is the camp decided on? And um, I'll answer maybe how athletes are in invited there's we have events every year that are open to all athletes um and so we try to find opportunities um that are both completely open with um with anybody participating and then we also have camps that are more based on um performance and in how how athletes are progressing and and so some camps are are open to just the national team some camps are open to everybody and then sometimes it's it's in between um, so I don't know if that answers the question, but. <laughs> I think that's good. Um, there's one question I have actually. Um, it's about, so you mentioned that, um, it's U.S. is a big country and you're all spread over. Um, but how is it, um, and you come together mostly in the, in the winter time or pre winter time, I guess, for, for the, uh, preparations, but how do you keep up the communication during the year? So being spread apart, um, and. What do you use for for keeping up the communication there? Yeah, that's a really good question, and it's a big it, it's a challenge for sure. Um, I think we have really good coaches who, um, and it's very clear which coach is um, and is communicating with which athletes, and it's different for every group. So um, Beth Ann Chamberlain, who's one of our coaches, who I think is probably on this call, she's done a lot of virtual training sessions. Um, and maybe some athletes are actually on the call also. And, um, and so sometimes we, we keep up with the communication in that way, um, with our, with our national team athletes, um, many of them do summer sports also. And so sometimes it's hard to be in communication with them. And, and so that is sometimes we, we do one-on-one, -on -one, um, a lot of one-on-one -on -one phone sessions or, or video chats, um, and then also communicate through, um, you know, training plan software at times when we're talking specifically about, um, about training, training sessions. Very good. No, sounds, um, it sounds complicated, but I think it's uh, the way how to deal best with the, with the distance and being, being apart. Um, there's one more question from Pablo from Argentina. Pablo, please, uh, feel free to come on mute. Hi there. Hi. Hi, Lynn. Hi, everyone. Um, how, how is uh, the, I mean, uh, trying to select your athletes for the team and everything? Um, they are coming pretty much for, from places with snow, from the mountains or from all, all over the U.S.? Because regarding the question that uh, Elke was doing, uh, to trying to keep keep up with the communication during the year and if it's uh if it's more centered in in places where where the snow is um yeah hi pablo it's nice to hear your voice um yeah this is it it depends is the answer <laughs> um <laughs> have um many of you may remember andy soul um he won a gold medal in, in Pyeongchang in the sprint and several others, but um, he's from Texas, which which I don't know what you know of Texas, but there's not snow in Texas. <laughs> um, and so I think uh, sometimes for, for sit skiers, I think it, it's, we, we can, there's a little more flexibility. Um, but I, but we do make sure that we can find times to be on snow in the winter, at least for training camps. Um, and 
you know, ideally when we are recruiting, trying to look for recruiting athletes, especially standing and visually impaired athletes, um, we, we start in places that have snow, um, because we know that it's, it, it is possible to do without being from a snowy place, but it's much easier to have good quality, consistent training if you have snow where you live. Um, and so it, it, it's both, we work with athletes kind of wherever they are, um, and try to get them to snow as much as possible. But, um, when we're looking to, to find new athletes, we always start where there's snow. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Are we good there, okay? Um, so nothing from the chat. So the last chance for anybody who has a question. Good. Uh, maybe it was oh, okay from uh, much ahead. to go back from my head and then. The last question. Maybe you can read it up. Uh, uh, I think yeah. So I'm looking for it. Yeah. So it's um, I just read it out. Now. Yeah. We have two athletes in, in Ghana who does uh, who do skiing. And is there a way we can work together for them to get more experience in such training sections? Maybe camps. So maybe Matilda, if you want to come off mute, uh, just to elaborate a bit more on your question, that would be great. Okay, I think it's um, it's being connected and um, work together on, on camps, I guess. Um, I don't know, Aline, if you want to mention, uh, say something to that or you go with the... Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, one big um, important thing that we've often had athletes take part of as camps, camps like this, I think is a really good way to get started. Obviously, this was meant to be on snow <laughs> and we all wish that we were in a world right now where, th where that's possible. But, um, but these, uh, is this through Agitos, um, Elka, this camp? Um, no, I think it's not specifically. I think it's the camps you mentioned earlier um, for different groups you're, you're planning. Um, so it's, I think it's a wider question, I think, for, from Machid. So it's, um, yeah, giving the opportunity for, for camps, working together, be at the same place. I guess so uh, for sure. Um, after this uh, online camp, also we're gonna stay all in touch, and um, I think we keep the, the Facebook group and the Instagram group also up, and uh, try to to share um, something there if, if camps come up. Hopefully, um, things open up soon and get better, so that's also possible. Um, there's one last question because uh, we need to move to the photo session soon. Um, yeah, from from Indira. So, Dira, yesterday you were not happy to come on, but uh, it's okay. I can can read it out as well. I think it's a good question. <laughs> it's uh, tips on how to be as good as Oksana and Kendall. Wow, uh, this is a very this very good question. <laughs> um, I think you know the the for any athlete who is successful at a very high level, there's you have to you have to be willing to 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 do the work. And that's one hundred percent. You know that is the most important part is you have to be willing to you know go train when it's bad when it's cold and when it's raining and when you don't want to <laughs> um and i think you know looking for both of them are always looking for ways that they can improve even you know even when maybe you see them and they they win a lot of races so it's easy to say ah, okay they're at the highest level they don't need to get better they they do need to get better and um i could tell you lots of ways that both of them <laughs> need to get better um and are working to get better and this is a this is an important thing so i would say you know you have to be willing to work hard and you um should always be you know finding finding new ways to do things ways to learn and, and ways to improve Very good. I think good message thank to you. the end. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, thank you, Alien. Fantastic that you have uh, time to share with us. Thanks a lot, Alien.
Yeah. Thank and, you for um, thank you. Good. Then uh, you can stay, Elke and Per Erik. We're gonna now have the photo competition. I'm very excited. Yeah, we have to announce <laughs> the winner of today. So um, again, the mask got the prizes torch. So uh, yeah, we'll I will share the screen, Elke, and you can uh, announce the winner, maybe. Yeah, let's do that. See it now? Yes, so the winner is Marcelo Parada with this really nice shot from Argentina. Um, yeah, no, so congratulations to, to Marcelo and uh, for thanks for sending us this uh, shot from the training uh, earlier today. Um, and actually it's not himself on the picture, but it's um, Pablo, I think, yeah. And uh, so he's a former para-athlete, but also um, he's the coach of the Argentinian team. So really great, great photo and inspiration, I guess, for everybody. Sure, sure, yeah. Great, we, okay. yeah, we have, a, we have some good news to, to announce, uh, I think, young Christian Alke, about the uh, next session. No, I'm not yeah. sure what that is. Ah, yeah, it's supposed to be <laughs> just open for coaches, but uh, now yeah. I can announce that also all uh, athletes are uh, uh, will be invited to the session about uh, equipment. So I think that's a uh, <laughs> yeah, good news. <laughs> Perfect, Eric. Thank you. Okay, then we have about 22 minutes to the next uh, session. So I have to say to all the athletes, uh, a big thank you. And uh, to all the speakers as well today, it was a fantastic uh, session. So thank you very much and uh, see you tomorrow or maybe later tonight. <laughs>